All right, now we're going to get into the uh, nuts and bolts of this thing. <coughs> All these rules of thumb that I'm going to be giving you on this part right here, we are basing everything relative to this point, that front finishing edge of those drums. So when we look at this right here, and it says you're supposed to, as the video said, you're supposed to set those augers an eighth to a quarter of an inch above grade. Those should be an eighth to a quarter above this point right here at the front finishing edge of our drums. You should, I don't know if you noticed in the video, but when I do this, I check right back here. I don't check on the front edge because as drums age and get older, they wear and the front edge wears more than the back edge. So they can be smaller up here than they are back here. So I'll always, when I'm setting those augers, I'll set them back here. The next one is, uh, as video said on the road vibe, you can set it at grade level or slightly below. It's got about an eight inch fins on it, so you can set it to where those are you know, uh, eighth of an inch below grade. It's basically to vibrate that top uh, couple of inches if you have it. If you don't, fine. Now, we already talked about that being grade level. Right here. So far, we have got this thing set up flat. We have made sure the legs on the front and back were the same. We have made sure that when we measured down off of our carriage rail, that all four corners of those drums were the same. Now this is telling me that when I start working, that I need to have that back edge roughly an eighth of an inch above grade. How do I do that? Just Which crank? Leg. Raise your back legs. I want you to remember something about that. When I raise this back leg right here, if I raise it up, what else does that do? Pushes your uh, augers down. Lowers the front end. Yeah. yeah, it's just like a like a seesaw. It's just being the pivot. When I raise that up, this goes down. When I lower that down, this goes up. You will need to know that when they start making adjustments because uh, you know, one thing will affect the other. So bear that in mind if a contractor starts making adjustments to the legs. The two most common adjustments that you will see them make are raising or lowering the augers or raising or lowering the back legs. Mm -hmm. And if you raise or lower the back legs, you're actually doing a double dip. <coughs> this part right here, your drag pans, uh, they're hanging from chains off this frame. The only thing I really want you to remember about that is the bars that these chains slide back and forth on should be facing in and out of the screen right here. And if you turn them the other way, I've seen some bad things happen. And you've got about a 50-50 chance whoever grabs that thing sets it out there to put it on the machine, whichever way they lay it down is the way they hook it up. <laughs> but what we want to see is their, the bars are going with the direction of travel of the boat. Okay, said uh, the most common adjustment is probably this one right here, which is that raises or lowers your own. Mm -hmm. Now, what's wrong with this picture? Mm -hmm. It does not have a pin in it. I have seen cases where a contractor didn't have a pin or it vibrated out, and as, it, uh, as the pour went on, especially if he had those vibrators on there, the augers just slowly started going down, and all of a sudden he doesn't have enough mix back on his drums to finish. So you always want to make sure there's a pin in there. This other adjustment is for that vibrator. This one looks like it's turned all the way on, I think. But it's easy to check. If, it, if he's got it, he's supposed to be using it. Uh, if he tells you he's going to use it, just check to make sure it's working. You can stick your toe to it and you'll know if it's working or not. Now, again, in all these, these rules of thumb that I was giving you, eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch, all this stuff, it is not things that we're going to fight him on. These are rules of thumb. We're going to leave him alone as long as it's finishing good. If it's finishing fine, I'm not going to be saying anything about this. If it starts not finishing fine, then we're going to start having discussions about how it has been set up and what adjustments we might need. Okay. Uh, what's the role, guys? In front of the screen with the race. What's their job? 
there's a row of guys out on the deck pour in front of the screen with a bunch of rakes. What do they do? Do what? They're supposed to keep enough up there. But what do they do? They want them to come right here and rake all this out. Just try to get the same level as this back here. Not really what you want. One of the things that really bugs me is when I see them out there furiously raking, and they rake too much out, and they now have to push some more back, rake right. some more out. The thing is supposed to be pushing a half a diameter of that auger. So as long as it's not going more than that, I'm, I don't care. I'm just going to sit there and watch it. If it starts really getting up here to be too much and I start having finishing problems, then maybe they need to drape. But I'd rather them let it you know, push some head. That's what it's supposed to be doing, is pushing that head and leaving that eighth or quarter, whatever we're setting, the material for our paving rollers to finish. Okay, the, uh, another rule of thumb is the rollers are supposed to have like a golf ball size roll of grout in front of them. That's supposed to be ideal. Now a lot of that can, can change with uh, something like mix consistency. That's another thing that I'm not going to be arguing with him about. It can be a, an indicator to me if things aren't going well. The size of that roll can be an indicator to me of what may be going wrong. But if everything's finishing right, I'm not going to stand there and argue with him over the size of his roll of grout. I want to see a good job, and if he's giving me a good job, I'm going to leave him up. Now, we talked about the augers quite a bit. There is a left-hand auger, and there's a right-hand auger. And again, what was the purpose of the augers? It's pushing this concrete ahead, right? What happens if you put your augers on backwards? It pulls the concrete in, and it floods your drums, and you end up with a big mess and have to back up. It should never get on, you should never get to that point. You should be able, during the dry run, to look at this thing, because it's already supposed to have all the attachments on it. You should be able to look at that thing running and tell whether he's got it on there right or not. If you look at it, it's kind of like the old barber pole. If you look at this thing while it's running, and this bottom edge of this auger looks like it's moving forward, he's on there right. If you look at it and it looks like that bottom edge is moving backwards, he's got it on backwards, and you need to tell him about it. Now, next comes your rollers or your drums. You can set this machine up to do whatever you want to. Any of these machines will, uh, they will go to the end of the pass in reverse direction. They will keep the same direction, finishing direction the whole time. You can make them do whatever. This particular situation right here where you've got both the drums turned into the middle like that, you should not really see that unless you're on a 90 degree skew and a crown. And we'll see the reasons behind that a little bit later. But that's pretty much the only time you ought to see that right there. Normally for the work we do, you will see the drums turning in one direction through the port. All right, I'm going to throw two more terms on you right now. A finishing pass and a traveling pass. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to take a stab at what the difference in those is? Finishing pass, get the concrete back into finish the uh, concrete properly, and then come back. Should be not taking concrete back out. Yep. The finishing pass. If the if this is the way my drums are turning, the finishing pass is going to be in that direction. And I'm always using that one because it's, uh, if that was a little car, and the wheels are turning in this direction, you would expect the car to be coming this way. The finishing pass is backwards. The finishing pass, they're turning this way. You can tell because that's the direction it's pushing the grout. Now, a traveling pass is if that's my little car and I see these wheels turning like this, the car ought to be coming in this direction. So when the bogey's moving in this direction, that is a traveling pass. There's, uh, it's important to know the difference in these, especially when we get over here on a skewed pool. So, finishing pass is cutting against the grain, it's pushing grout with it, and the traveling pass is just rolling back over what you finished, and that's going to be important, so remember. Okay, uh, we're going to come back to this drawing once, maybe twice later, but we're going to need it right now. On a skew, which, you know, a whole lot of times we end up pouring on a skew. There's three, you know, I've given you rules of thumb so far. I'm going to give you three hard rules now. Two hard rules and one that we can bend. 
when I am finishing on a skew like this, which direction do you think my finishing pass should be going? Which direction should I be pushing my ground in this example right here? What? Should I be going from leading edge to trailing edge or trailing edge to leading edge? What? You should always, right here, finish. This is rule number one. Always finish from the leading edge of the machine to the trailing edge of the machine. Now, why is it? Okay, let's imagine this, this thing is it's kind of like a big squeegee. Isn't it? Those drums are acting like a big squeegee, squeegeeing off the top of this deck. Now, if this is my squeegee, and I'm taking it and I'm moving it like this, be it across this deck or across my windshield or a tile floor or whatever, if I've got water or whatever on there and I'm moving my squeegee like this, where is the excess material going to be coming off my squeegee? It's going to be coming out like this. If I'm coming this way, then that excess material is going to be coming off that edge. Well, I've already finished. I've taken a lot of great pains back here to get this finished nice. I don't want that excess grout coming off back there. I want to be finishing in this direction, have my excess grout be spit out the front, out where I need some grout to be finishing with anyway. So we're always, that's a cardinal rule on this, always finish from leading edge to trailing edge. And again, we're not going to be reversing our drums. Second rule, and this is where DOT has had it wrong for a lot of years. Um, what do we have at the end of our superstructure plans? A little drawing with some arrows and dotted lines and stuff on it. Pore sequence. What happens? I mean, we see this right here. Direction of pore is important. If the deck has a super elevation, normal procedure is to finish from the low <coughs> side of the deck to the high side of the deck. Now what happens if we get in there and we've got a pore sequence that's telling me which way to go? We've got a skew, and I know that I've just said the first rule is we go from leading edge to trailing edge. But in doing that, I'm going to be finishing down the hill. What do we do? Why do we care? What happens when you finish down the hill? Yep, you end up with a mountain grout down at the low gutter line, right? Where's that grout coming from? Coming off the top. And what you may end up seeing, in addition to that big pile of grouts, you may see that open pitted finish that you see sometimes. So we don't want to do that. But what do we do about that? But if you go from the low side to the high side, then you're going to be going from trailing in to leading in. And when you do that, you're going to be leading that roll of grout out the back end. So what do we do? Change direction. Yes. Hopefully, him or him or me or Lee or somebody has caught that ahead of time. But if they haven't and you see this, you need to raise the flag and say, I think we need to change this because <coughs> I think for years the people in structure design were told we want to be finishing up the hill. And, but if you listen to the guys that do this for a living, that's not the case. We want to finish it down. Here. And it's not really, you know, we can go either way on that part. But we, if we can change that pore direction to where we can finish from the leading edge to the trailing edge and finish up the hill, that's where we want to be. Then if we're finishing up or down grade, we can work with that. That's not a big deal. But uh, if you see that, you think that's a problem, you call your area guy, your resident, whoever, and you say, hey, we need to have a little, a little closer look at this. Not a big deal to change that pore sequence, but I would not take that monkey on my own back. So uh, if you want to you do a little, have a discussion about that. So anyway, leading edge to trailing edge, finishing uphill, and then finishing downgrade from the